بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحب التفل الله continuing on in our treaties our study of have mercy upon Salafia by Sheikh Bedr ibn Ali ibn Taymi al-Utaybi حفظ الله تعالى the Sheikh was mentioning about being a source of guidance and not being a source of fear for the people making people fear your criticisms and, and discouraging people from the son of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the name of Salafia, in the name of Dawah. Because Dawah is the opposite. Dawah is to call people. Dawah is to call. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions all throughout the Quran, Quran to call the people to the sabil al-mu'mineen. Call the people with beautiful preaching and, you know, uh, righteousness and uprightness. And that when you argue, that you argue with that which is better. All of those that comes from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, unfortunately, some individuals, some of our brothers and sisters, sometimes we ourselves fall into thinking that we are better than the people and discouraging them from the correct menhaj. The Shaykh said, Hafidullah ta'ala, yes, amongst the Salafis today, Again, he said, amongst the Salafis. He didn't say, uh, you know, all the Salafis. He didn't say, but he said, amongst the, a ta'if a minhu. Amongst the Salafis today are those who cause the people to flee and test the people in their religion. They harm the Salafi minhads due to their disgusting statements and strange actions due to their oppression and ignorance. In fact, due to their detested hizbiya for individuals and personalities, due to their criticizing people who when the same matter is found in who they love, they do not criticize Allahu Akbar. Well, I, the, that statement right there is full and it's full of benefit and we're going to break it down. Yes, amongst the Salafis today are those who cause the people to flee and test the people in the religion. The first thing, Imam Baba Hari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Al-Imtihan, or Imtihan al-Nas, Bid'ah. That this is, it's, it's a Bid'ah. Now, there's lots of tafsil with this, and this is not the place that we're going to talk about, get, get into details about testing the people and when it's permissible and when it's not. But the point is the way it has been abused, and I'm going to tell you some real situations. One particular individual that I know, alhamdulillah, he's on the son of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's Salafi now. But I remember when he was Sufi, and, and then after that he got mixed with the Takfiris. He met some brothers when he was new to the Dawah. They asked him about... Uh, Abu Hassan al-Ma'rabi. Abu Hassan al-Ma'rabi is a well-known uh, mubtadi'ah that is innovated in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who used to be upon the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and was well-known and his affairs well-known. However, they tested this individual who's an English speaker. The brother said, I don't know. I, I don't, you know, what's your position, they said? He said, I don't know. They said, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi. You know, then they gave him salams and they left him. Meaning that they made a test of this individual who doesn't speak Arabic, doesn't, didn't know about the issues of Abu Hassan. Those issues didn't even concern him. He was new to the Dawah, trying to learn Kitabi Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the understanding of the Salaf of Ummah. And you're going to bring the issue of Abu Hassan al Ma'rabi to him. When Abu Hassan doesn't speak English, his lectures were probably very few that have been translated into English. There was no harm, there was no effect of that dawah, even though it, the mistakes that it had and the bid'ah that it contained of having, uh, uh, that this brother needed to be aware about. But however, the people tested him and made their al-wala wal bara based upon that. That's the point. Many, many situations like this, and this is an incredibly dangerous situation. I know a, a particular brother, he got into Jamal Islamiya from my community. May Allah guide us in him and forgive us in him. He was new to the Dawah, new to the Dawah. He had a tape, a cassette. This was 20 years ago now, probably about 20 years ago. He had a tape of an individual that the brothers had problems with. This, is, this individual also fell into his bia. But at the, the, the point is the brother didn't know anything about that. They spied upon him. They took his cassette and they took it to one of the Mashaikh 
and the brother was expelled from Gemma Salamiya. That shows you how much power that they had. The point is testing the people. What a dangerous way that the people uh, try to practice these, these principles. So then the Sheikh, he said, and test the people in their religion. What's your position on so-and-so? What do you feel about this uh, group? What do you feel about these group of brothers? And if you have the wrong answer, they make hajr of you. They won't give you salams. And this is a big mistake. And the Mashaikh have talked about it so much. I asked Sheikh Saleh Suhaimi a few years back about this issue. And I said, Sheikh, you know, we have this problem in the West. You know, the brothers, uh, there are some brothers, they make empty hand of the people. It's become widespread. And then he said, who? Like Abu Hassan al-Ma'rabi. And then he mentioned another person who had deviated as well. And I said, yes, Sheikh. And I didn't want to mention even the, the name. I didn't want to even get involved in that. I just wanted to let the Sheikh know to be, be aware of this issue and how should we deal with it? Because the people are testing the people. And it's causing great fitna in our communities. And the Sheikh said they harm the Salafi minhaj due to their disgusting statements and strange actions. They do, with this test, they then go and slander and attack the character of the people, causing divorces, causing all kind of fitna in communities. How many communities have been destroyed? How much good has, has been, uh, has been uh, destroyed? And, and, and thrown away because of this testing and because of, uh, of criticizing one another for mistakes or people's position. People who have the same position as you, the same uh, understanding of Islam. They, take, they have the same minhaj, but they disagree on one individual or they're not even aware of the mistake of that individual. And you expect them to take your understanding and your position just blindly like that. You don't want them to look at Adilla. This is the mushkila that we have, and it's caused so much fitna. How many brothers can we think of who I know are Salafi, who call the kitab illa wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the men of the Salaf, but now certain communities and certain brothers speak only ill about them. You'll see their qalam, their, their pen, their qalam is wet with uh, refutations of these brothers. But how many refutations do they have of Hamza Yusuf? How many refutations do they have of other people, the takfiris and others? You'll find for some of the people, it's next to none. But how many do they have about their Salafi brothers? You could write whole books in volumes. Wallahu musta'an. And they harm the Salafi minhaj due to their disgusting statements. And you see how the people speak about one another. Imbeciles, this donkey, this ignorant such and such. I just recently, a brother sent me some refutations about a particular individual in the UK. I don't know the individual. I wasn't defending the individual, I didn't, but I read a little bit about his situation, what he said, but the brother who sent this to me, very severe and harsh. And then when I spoke and I said, hey, that we should have gentleness with our brothers and as a general principle, and this is what I've learned from the ulama, that we begin with some gentleness with, with the people. We call them back, especially if they're from Ahl Sunnah, they're from the same minhaj. The brother jumped on me as, as if, he was a violent gorilla beating, a, beating a, another beast into submission. He, he, he attacked me very strongly about this, saying, you know, I need to give you sincere advice. You know, where do you come up with this gentleness? I'm subhanAllah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that, you know, that the asloob is gentle. And we'll come with some ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam later on in the uh, sitting. So the Sheikh he mentioned and strange actions. I'll give you another true situation. A brother related to me in the UK. A brother who had just come from Yemen. He had just come from Damaj. This brother only studied maybe one year. So maybe he knew a little bit of Arabic. Well, alhamdulillah. But what are you going to gain in one year? So he comes out. He's back in the UK. He's in a car with another brother. Maybe it was this particular individual It was in the car with him. He said the brother saw a, a, a tabliki guy walking down the street and he yelled out the window, you tabliki. He didn't curse him, but he said tabliki or something crazy like this. That sounds like a, 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 the strangest thing. I can't even comment. I want to say some, some other statements, but I'm trying to maintain good adab when dealing with this. But it shows you how extreme and how strange some of the people uh, become because you would never find the ulama of Ahl Sunnah doing this, acting 
doing these kind of behaviors. Never have we seen this in their sittings, in their gatherings, of them behaving as some of these individuals do, Wallahu Musta'an, and having Islamic roundtables where they question and humiliate the people. What Billah, what's your position with so-and-so? How come we didn't see you in the lecture with so-and-so? We saw you in the masjid with so-and-so. We saw you give salams to so-and-so. What Billah. And this, as the Sheikh says, it leads to Hizbiya. The Sheikh then says, he says, they harm the Salafi minhaj due to their disgusting statements and strange actions, due to their oppression and ignorance. A lot of times it's mabni ala jahl, that you find the people, most of the people practicing this. Even if some of them might be some, uh, have some talab al-ilm, you know, they've done some talab, they have some knowledge. But it's really, it's mabni ala jahl, it's built upon jahl, these principles. Because then when you go astray, and you take that as a ta'id, a principle that you begin with harshness, and you begin with attacking the people, you begin by scaring the people away from the da'wah, and making imtihan and nas, and that they have to accept from your community, they have to sit with your group of brothers, and they have to, you know, be with your uh, uh, mashayikh only, these two or three that you take from, then this is hezbiya. This is ma'na hizbiya, that you are calling to yourself, you're calling to your group, you're calling to your party, you're calling to your sect. Isn't that what the, the other groups do? Isn't that what the what Jamaat Tablik does? Isn't that definitely what uh, uh, Khwana Muslimin does? That you have to take from their mashayikh, that you have to have their understanding, that you have to take their qa'idah, their principle, and that they make al-wala wal bara on this? So sometimes our brothers and sisters can fall into that dangerous practice that they detest Hezbiya so much, but perhaps because of their jahu, or perhaps because of their zeal, that they fall into Hezbiya likewise, calling to their individuals and making sure that you take their position. The Sheikh then said, he said, in fact, due to their detested Hezbiya for individuals and personalities, due to their criticizing people who when the same matter is found in who they love, they do not criticize. Meaning that sometimes their own brothers who are beloved to them, who are calling with them, fall into the same issues that they declare other people to be innovators for, and they defend their brother, or they overlook their mistakes, but they don't give those excuses to their brothers. They don't give their excuses to their, their brothers or those people who they have a problem with. And this is incredibly problematic and a credibly dangerous disease that is plaguing our da'wah because unfortunately there are individuals who fall into that. There are jama'at who fall into this within the da'wah to Ahl sunnah They have deviated from the da'wah to Ahl sunnah because it's not a part of the da'wah to Ahl sunnah Hezbiya. Hezbiya is bil aks. It's the opposite. It goes against it. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.